how he said not home for Kyle Pastor. What's that mean? Okay. I I just restarted this so that we could uh get the live stream back on track. I think na sobrahan lang yung Wi-Fi. And so kailangan lang iulit ito. Anyway, um, so we're just going to redo this real quick. So again, Romans chapter 12 verse 1 uh, talks about our reasonable service. Our reasonable service. Makatwirang paglilingkod. O yung makatarungan paglilingkod. Na may kahalong pagsasamba. When you serve the Lord, you're worshiping the Lord. So think about it that way. When you come to serve him at the same time you are worshiping him to so how do you worship the lord uh, it's important that we worship him in spirit and in truth and it's important then that we serve him in spirit and in truth as well and so we have standards to maintain so that we protect our worship for the lord and at the same time we have standards that we maintain to protect um uh, our service for the Lord. And so the, the idea of service and worship ay synonymous. Magkaparehas yan sa Bible. Yung paglilingkod at pagsasamba sa Diyos. Dalawa, dalawang salita yan pero magkaparehas yung layunin yan. Na ang paglilingkod at pagsasamba sa Diyos ay nagbibigay uh, kaluwalhatian sa Diyos. So the number one goal of serving in the church is to glorify God. The number one reason why God put us in the church is so that we can glorify Him, we can serve Him, we can worship Him. And the number two uh, 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 purpose of serving in the church is to make disciples. God wants us involved in making disciples. Ang layunin ng Diyos, hindi lang para bigyan siya ng kaluwalhatian, Pero layunin din ng Diyos na tayo ay gumagawa ng mga disipulo ng Panginoon. God wants us to become disciples and to make disciples. And you're not a disciple until you are discipling someone. Uh, hindi ka disipulo hanggat hindi ikaw ang nagdedisipulo sa iba. Uh, or you're not a good disciple at least if you're not involved in discipleship. And so whether you are in discipleship or you're giving discipleship, God is all about making disciples. Ang point number two ay napakahalaga. Kaya tayo naglilingkod ay para yung mga tinuturuan natin ay maging disipulo ng Panginoon. Nagtuturo tayo, nangangaral tayo upang ang tao ay magdesisyon na sila ay sumunod sa Diyos. And so we preach and teach the word of God, so that people can become disciples. All right, so the number one goal is to give God glory. The number two goal is to make disciples. So we have to make disciples of the children in Sunday school. We have to make disciples of the teenagers in our church service. We have to make disciples of the women and the men in our church. We have to make disciples of everyone. Uh, if you meet someone, uh, a stranger, it's your responsibility to make them a disciple of Jesus Christ. This is God's goal for each and every one, man, women, children. God wants disciples. And so they can't be a disciple until they are first saved. Kailangan ligtas sila. O sino magtuturo sa kanila ng kaligtasan kung hindi ikaw, kung hindi ako? At uh, hindi lang palagi ang pastor ang pwedeng magturo. Kailangan lahat involved sa pagtuturo ng gospel para sila ay maging disciples. So, yes, they need to be saved. That's foundational. Evangelize, then make them disciples. But the pastor is not the only one responsible for discipleship. You are responsible for discipleship, especially if you're a member of our church. That's your responsibility, not just the pastor's responsibility. Uh, and so uh, that's our two main goals, to glorify God and to make disciples. <clears throat> now, what are the ways that we can accomplish that goal, the goal of making disciples? So, yung mga Sunday school natin na mga bata, dapat disipulo sila. Yung mga young people natin, dapat disipulo sila ng Panginoon. Yung mga... 
uh, babae at mga lalaki ng church natin, dapat sila ay maging disipulo ng Panginoon. Yung mga tatay, dapat disipulo ng Panginoon. Yung mga nanay, dapat disipulo ng Panginoon. And so, uh, man, women, child, husbands need to be disciples. Wives need to become disciples of Jesus Christ. And so, how do we make disciples? Well, let's see. <clears throat> This is a very practical way. Uh, and I want to get back to the teachers. Okay? So, sa mga teachers, sa mga nagtuturo ng Sunday school, uh, sa mga nagtuturo ng mga discipleship, uh, sa mga uh, hahawak sa pulpito at mga ngaral ng salita ng Diyos, uh, here is some of the most basic things that will help you become an effective disciple maker or an effective teacher. Okay? Number one, ang paghahanda at pagpaplano ay isang kritikal na sangkap ng epektibong ministry. It is the preparation and planning. Preparation and planning is critical for an effective ministry. If you want your ministry to become effective, you have to plan and prepare ahead of time. So, bagamat yung Sunday school natin, 30 minutes lang. If you think about our Sunday school, we only have Sunday school for 30 minutes. It's 9.30 until 10 o'clock in the morning. That's it. That's our children's Sunday school ministry. Now, thankfully, we have the boys on room 20 and we have the girls in room 19. Uh, but if you think about, we only have 30 minutes to make an impact in the lives of these children. We need to plan and prepare ahead of time so that we can become effective teachers and ministers to the children. Now, yung planning and preparation, hinahanda po yan before Sunday school. Nobody plans and prepares a day before Sunday school. Marsha, for example, takes the time to plan and prepare a curriculum. Here's an example. Oh, yung mga teachers natin, binibigyan natin sila ng kalendar. Ito ay curriculum ng mga Sunday school natin sa mga boys and girls. Nandito yung mga pangalan ng workers, yung mga responsibility nila. Alam mo ba kung gaano karaming oras ang binubuhos para sa planning and preparation nito? Oh, hindi lang ho yan, Sun Saturday Ministry. This is not just a Saturday ministry. This was planned and prepared for months ago. And so think about the time that it takes to prepare for Sunday school. It's worth preparing. It's worth planning. Because when you have a plan and you're well prepared, you can have an effective ministry. Alam natin kung saan natin dadalhin yung mga bata magmula uh, pagpasok nila, paglabas nila. And so plan and prepare. And that's my point. That's the first thing. An effective ministry, an effective disciple maker, an effective teacher is well planned and well prepared. Do you plan and prepare for your class? Do you plan and prepare for your responsibilities? How much time does it take? Or how much time do you take to plan and prepare for your ministry? I know some pastors, I know some preachers, they plan for their sermon Saturday night. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but for me, I think I need a lot more time to plan and prepare uh, for an effective ministry. And certainly, uh, every teacher has a calendar so that they can plan and prepare ahead of time. Now, yung curriculum natin, base sa book. This is the curriculum that we use. We use uh, Lessons for Life as a Sunday School curriculum. And this book gives you the, the meat and bones of the Sunday School week. And week after week, we go through this. Punong-puno ito ng ideas, punong-puno ito ng tema, punong-puno ito ng examples, punong-puno ito ng mga suggestions na pwedeng gamitin bawat linggo. And so think about it. There are about... 46 lessons, there's only 52 Sundays in one year, 
and there's 46 lessons already planned out, already prepared and planned so that we know exactly where we're taking these children. You see how much time does it take to plan and prepare for Sunday school? Hindi lang po basta basta ang Sunday school ministry. Uh, if you want an effective ministry, you need to plan and prepare ahead of time uh, for an effective ministry. Um, mas mainam kung yung teacher o yung helper ay overprepared kesa sa underprepared. It's better to be overprepared than underprepared. Um, uh, ang mabisang teacher or helper or disciple maker ay patuloy na naghahanda at nagpaplano. They continually improve. They continually to learn to improve. One of the problems uh, of, of Sunday school teachers or ministry workers or disciple makers is they think they arrived and there's no more room for improvement. Well, I have a thing called AOI. Ano yung AOI? Areas of improvement. And I'll tell you something. I can improve. You can improve. We all could improve. And if we think that we arrived, uh, we are we're goners. Uh, we're losers, okay? Uh, so, sa pagtuturo ng Sunday School, wag natin isipin na nakarating na tayo, ha? alam na natin ang dapat gawin kasi overprepared naman tayo, no? Ang mabisang teacher ay nag-aaral ng paraan kung paano siya nag pwedeng mag-improve sa kanyang pagtuturo uh, para maging epektibo siya na teacher. Now, uh, ang epekto o yung impact ng paghahanda at pagpaplano ay makikita ko yan sa kanilang paglilingkod. Where do you see the impact of planning and preparing? I'll tell you where you see it. You see it when the children come on to Sunday school. You see it in the class as they're teaching and discipling. You see they're prepared. They plan, to, they plan for things. They're not thrown for a loop. They know exactly what they're going to say. They know exactly what their goal is, their aim. They know exactly what to do. They're not wasting time. Uh, and so you could tell when somebody is pre prepared and planned for their ministry. You can also tell someone who sh just shoot off the hip, shoot off the cuff, you know. They just, hindi sila handa. And makikita mo yung hindi handa. Kapag nagtuturo sila, mali, palpak, ganun. Now, <clears throat> let me just say na lahat tayo, lalo na si Ate Lat, si Ate Bambi, bago lang yan sa pagtuturo. So, okay lang Ate Lat, Ate Bambi, huwag kayong mag-alala sa pagtuturo niyo sa teaching niyo You're learning, you're improving. Si Ate Kate, uh, nagtuturo na siya ng Bible verse sa mga bata. Uh, Napaka-effective yung kanyang pagtuturo. Uh, Pinag-aaralan yan ni Kate. Pinag-aaralan yan. Nagiging sanay habang tumatagal at ginagawa natin ito. Magiging sanay ka sa pagtuturo. That the more you teach, the more you preach, the more you'll improve. And so continue to improve and study and think about it. And write down what are some of the areas of improvement that I can do as a disciple maker, as a teacher, as a helper, what are some of the things that I can work on? Uh, maybe I can watch a video. Maybe I can read a book. Maybe I can uh, ask questions. Maybe I can observe a, a good teacher and see what are their techniques? What are their methods? How do they communicate the lesson? Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do to improve, but the point is you can see the impact of planning and preparation when it's time for ministry. And so if you're not prepared, if you're not planning and prepared, your class is going to suffer. Your ministry is going to be limited and hindered. So it is so important to plan and prepare. Kasama na ho dyan yung prayer. Kasama na dyan yung pagbibisita sa mga bata. Kasama na rin dyan yung relasyon mo sa mga bata. Now, here's a 
here's some other things that I think, uh, I'll give you six things, six things, and I'm almost finished, about um, how to become an effective teacher, how to become effective uh, disciple maker. Ito yung mga bagay na dapat pag-aralan. Number one, arrive early. <laughs> Don't be late. Arrive early. Every effective teacher arrives at their classroom early. Now, it's really bad kapag nandyan yung mga bata, wala pa yung mga teacher. That's really bad. Wala kang control sa kwarto, wala kang control sa classroom kapag nauna ang student kesa sa mga teachers. A good teacher arrives early. It's good to be on time, but I think if you're going to be an effective teacher, on time is a little bit earlier than normal. Stay late. Don't be in a hurry to leave. <laughs> That's na, uh, another sign of an effective teacher. Pero dumating ng maaga. Hindi lang yung nasa oras ka, pero maaga. Okay? Maaga. <laughs> early. In Tagalog, early means maaga. <laughs> that means early. <laughs> And I'm repeating it because it's important. Uh, may panahon para makipag-usap sa mga bata bago magsimula ang ministry. Here's another thing that's an effective, uh, an effective suggestion for teachers. Talk to the students before school starts, before Sunday school begins. You should have time to communicate with them, see how they're doing, kumustaan mo sila, batiin mo sila, kausapin mo sila before yung formal teaching at pag-start ng Sunday school. Why? Because you're building relationship with them. They'll listen to you more if they know you care. Kapag alam nila na ikaw ay uh, merong pagmamalasakit para sa kanila, pakikinggan kanila. Pero kung wala kang pagmamalasakit para sa iyong mga estudyante, kahit na marunong ka at maayos ang kayong kaalaman, hindi ka pakikinggan. And so, come early, spend time talking with the children, and get to know them before the class starts so that you can become an effective teacher. Paminsan, gamitin ang Sabado para bumisita o makipag-ugnay sa mga bata at magulang. You can also use Saturdays to visit them, to see how they're doing, to encourage them in the things of the Lord. Maybe to talk about the Bible verse that they're memorizing. Maybe to keep in contact with their parents and let them know how they're behaving in class. Uh, use your Saturday. You can, I'm not saying that you visit them every Saturday. I'm not saying that. But once in a while, it's good to visit them and see how they're doing. Uh, again, relationship is so important. <clears throat> Do you pray for your Sunday school children? Are you focused on them? Do you target them specifically? Do you have a burden for them? Do you have a burden for yourself as a teacher to improve and to get better and better? Do you visit them and see how they live and see their condition? Oh, this is so important. A uh, part of being a disciple maker is visitation. Now, pinag-aaralan niya ng nitong mabisang teacher ang iba't ibang pamamaraan ng pagtuturo. An effective teacher studies how to teach better. So that's your assignment, I guess, you know. Uh, look up someone that's an excellent teacher and see how they teach. Watch what they do. Observe how they do things. An effective teacher communicates the lesson in a way that the children cannot miss the point. Pwede siyang magturo na hindi na nalilito ang bata. Pag-aralan mo yung teacher na ganun. Huwag magmadali. Mas maganda kung kahit na isa o dalawang katotohanan ang matutu maturuan, at least nakuha ng bata ang katotohanan. It's better to teach them one or two truths 
than five or ten truths that they cannot comprehend. And so take your time and study how to be an effective teacher. Uh, ang number one rule ng teacher. Now, I'm going to end with this. What is the number one rule of the teacher? The number one rule of the disciple maker? The number one rule of the, the one who's going to teach? You, you know what the rule is? The number one rule? Okay. I'll tell you what the number one rule is. Dapat alam ng teacher ang lesson ng lubusan. Kilalang kilala ng teacher o ng helper ang kanyang paksa. The number one rule of the teacher is that the teacher has to know thoroughly, completely, the lesson that he or she is trying to teach. That's the number one rule of the teacher. You have to know thoroughly, completely, immerse yourself in the lesson that you're going to teach. Now, here's something that can help you. If you can summarize your lesson in one sentence, that's a good way to know that you have clarity of mind and you are clearly understand what the goal is of teaching. So you, let's say you have a lot of things you want to teach, but if you can summarize it in one sentence, then that becomes an effective way of communicating that truth. So halimbawa, malaki ang paksa na gusto mong turuan ng, na gusto mong ituro kung kaya mo na ibuod sa isang, sa isang pangungusap ang paksa di merong klaro at malinaw yung tinutur yung subject na tinuturo mo sa mga uh, bata o sa mga uh, dinidisciple mo. So ang paghahanda ay hindi sayang. Ito ay pamumuhunan. Okay? Let me stress this. Planning and preparing is never a waste. Planning and preparing is an investment. Invest your time into planning and preparing. And you will be an effective disciple maker. All right, so ayun na mga principles. Ilalagay natin ito sa website natin. Yung notes na ito, ilalagay din natin sa website natin para uh, ulitin ninyo, pakinggan ninyo, at um, mag-get ninyo yung notes natin. Kasama na rin yung lecture 1 at saka lecture 2 na napaka-importante. Uh, foundational. So now you have how to serve in the church part 3. Now I have one more week of teaching on how to serve in the church next Wednesday night. And I, I, Lord willing, we'll see you there. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to serve you. We thank you, Lord, that it's a privilege to serve. And we thank you, Lord, that there's a way to serve that's pleasing to you. And that by faith, we know that with your help, with your grace, we can become effective disciple makers. We can become effective teachers. Help us by faith to take the steps necessary to improve. We love you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. Ask your blessing upon us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Oh, yeah. Um, before you are dismissed, let me just say that this Sunday, uh, again, makita tayo ule at 10.25 for Sunday school. Tapos 11 o'clock morning worship service and 3 o'clock afternoon service this Sunday. Uh, if you have any needs, a messenger nila lang po dun sa group and uh, we'll, we'll continually uh, pray for one another. Thank you. God bless you.